Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. I've got a little something to share with you as I do periodically and it is a little something that and it's for the longest time that I haven't been been inspired like that that I had to go and make <laughs> immediately. <laughs> we, you know we all have those moments once in a while and here is a clue as to what I've used what I've made for this is the template with help from the film crew um, that Woolly Steph uh, put up. We all know Woolly Steph. I'll leave a link to Steph's channel below to make 50p shaped ATC, um, which I also fell in love with because I just think it's such a lovely little idea. Well, then I was channel hopping and found another lady. Let me get my little list here called Camellia Crafts Designs who had been directly inspired by a lady that she's been following for some time on Instagram called Lees, L-I-Z-E. I I will endeavour to leave a, a link, but I'm not very good at Instagram leaks, I have to, links, I have to say. So, you know, if you, if you check out Camellia's crafts designs, she does have a link to this lady on Instagram who doesn't do videos or anything but my goodness me what a lovely talented lady she is I will certainly maintain following her and you know seeing what Lise brings out next now the template as I said is what I've used to make some ATC 50 P's but to hold them I made the pocket that was found on Lisa's channel and it's made up using an ordinary paper bag. It doesn't need to be um, particularly strong. It can be any size at all and the same principle applies. And what you do is that this was the um, size of the bag that I've used let me just measure that for you. So from from top to bottom is seven inches, and then across widthwise is four and three quarters, roughly speaking. So what you do is open up your base and um, trim off. That that's the. Let me just get a bag so I can show you. I've got them quite handy here. I've got one out. This is this this is a larger bag again, so I'm going to try uh, another size. But basically, that is your standardised lunch bag. If I just widen out a bit, with this little um, gusset, which is essential to this working, and this square bottom bit here. So what you do basically is cut off one or the other. Of these edges so it would be if I show you from this perspective you would need to cut off that piece of the bag but you need to do it very carefully because you don't want to interrupt the seam here of the base on the other side so what I did basically was did a loose cut across there just in front of the um, score line there which then allowed me to trim back the bottom bit here to fold under that um, little piece that's still left from the base. You then use a brad or you may want to use something entirely different, it's up to you, which you put on the outside of the base. If you're going to decorate the bag like I did, then clearly you wouldn't add the brad until all the decorative parts were done. This then gets glued down and these odd little bits here so that it is substantial. You don't want it flopping around unnecessarily. It needs to be quite secure. And then down the centre of your bag you can either use a strip of glue 
or red line tape which I have here because I've done it from top to base like this but not entirely covering the whole area because I want a double strength area to fold up through and you literally just peel these off when the time comes having burnished all the edges of your paper bag to get them really whoops, tight and as flat as you possibly can. This is all glued down here so it's all very tidy and again if you want to decorate then it, that's the time to do it and then you fold up the base like so and when you open it out you have this lovely little concertina holdall or bag which is really really secure and I've, I've got a double layer here you can if you want to pop it right up to the top but when the lid folds over it actually looks like a little gift pocket ideal in journals because you would just glue that onto your page and you've got then pockets that you can open up and slot things into and then cover or like me you could just turn it into a little pocket and um, go from there. Now what we all do, leaving that aside because Camila does a nice tutorial on it, um, all of that aside, when we're inspired by something, we do then go on to put our own little stamp on it, which is what I have done. And I decided that I wanted to cover my paper bag, and this is exactly the same thing. There it is, plain, and you can stamp on it as Camellia did, or you know add um, collage to it whatever you like but I like things finished and I like them really um, substantial in the hand so what I've done is used the Artie Mays watercolour spring leftovers from a folio that I did before and then added some beads onto my baker's twine because that then formulates the closure from the um, brad that appears there. I then used my 50p, I'll just tighten in a little bit so you can see, I've used my 50p template to make my very first uh, 50p ATC for this little collection. I've lined the inside of the pockets, just on the side that you're going to see most of, and it, and it was a little bit ropey in there, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll just make it all the same. Let me go out again. That's it. But you can see it's a lovely concertina effect there. The bag had um, serrated edges here. I wanted to put little thumb pulls on the inside just to allow access to the pockets really, really nicely. And then I made my series of six 50p ATC. And they are all from the kit. I've used a Martha Stewart uh, leaf punch here little bits and pieces from the kit, some sentiment, some number. I've used a double thickness of craft card and then I've gone around the edges with some very cheap and cheerful do craft pearlized gold paint and then went over them all with some um, it's not Mod Podge but it is like a Liquitex kind of acrylic finish to protect the finish of the ATCs, the 50p ATCs, and they are all in their own right, different, but using the same um, papers. It was all leftover bits apart from the cardstock and the paper bag, but I am absolutely thrilled 
with how it's all come out it really does look very very lovely and I wanted then to share this with you in the hope as always to inspire to talk about a couple of new people that I've found one of them being Camellia Craft Designs who is a very prolific crafter and then the lovely Lise or Liz L I Z E over on Instagram who really is quite a remarkable crafter. I, I need to go and look some more but from what I've seen to date she really is a very meticulous, very um lovely crafter who clearly puts a great deal into her work. So there again is the little holder. This too has been covered with the acrylic and um, covered in the papers to within an inch of its life. <laughs> just just for, for sturdiness really. And again, I've smudged around the gold there having first put down some vintage photograph and that just gives it that lovely soft luster around the outside. So as I say, I hope I've inspired, I hope I've given you food for thought. It really is a lovely project and a lovely keeper of the ATC in their own right. There is a bit of glare there, sorry about that, but there's not a lot I can do about it. The light is not great today. Um, I will be sending these out in due course to someone who has also found the 50p ATC and is equally enamoured as I am. So thank you for sharing this little production today. It's always a pleasure to bring things to you and it has been quite a while since I've felt so fired up about something that, you know, is, is quite small in the great scheme of things but also very, very versatile. So happy crafting, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye for now.